Okay, thank you. For those who are way out, you can come in closer. First of all, I just want to acknowledge country. You know, country was never ceded, sovereignty was never ceded. We're on the land of um, Aboriginal nations. Wherever we go in Australia or on our land, we walk on Aboriginal land. So I want to just acknowledge country today and just thank you all for coming to celebrate the life of my beautiful, amazing aunt, Rose. Rosaline Patricia Bamblett, um, just a wonderful, wonderful aunt. And today I want to say that, you know, absent in the body, present with the Lord, that's where she is. And we're going to miss her, we're going to miss her smile, miss everything about her, just miss her being here. But we also want to celebrate, you know, we're, we're not going to dwell on anything except celebration. <laughs> And we know that in the coming days and weeks and months, we're going to mourn. That's just who we are. Another one missing from our um, 14 amazing Bamblet children. Um, you know, everyone that goes, we miss them. And we loved them when they were here and we love them still. So today I just want to welcome you all and thank you all for coming today and as the family, we appreciate all the people that have come here because you've known Rose in one capacity or another and you obviously respected her and want to come and say, give your condolences and say, see you to her. So I'm just going to open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank and praise you today because you're such an awesome Father. You're so wonderful. You're so amazing. You're so gracious. Thank you for the life of Rose. Thank you that you gave us her, that we've had her for so long, and that, Father, you've taken her now to be with you. I just want to thank you for everyone that's here today, Father. I just want to also thank you that, you know, you said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. So, Father, as we celebrate Rose's life today, and as we leave here, after we lay her to rest, just thank you for those coming weeks and months that we know that you'll place your arms around us and you'll hold us close to yourself and you'll comfort us. So, Father, I just want to thank you today. Thank you as we come together to celebrate the life of my aunt, Rosaline Patricia Bamblett, an amazing, wonderful woman. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, we've got a hymn now. I'm sure everyone knows this hymn, so if you can sing along with it, you, if you want to, you can. And um, it's the old rugged cross.
thank you. You know, the Bible says for those who um, exchange the old rugged cross for a crown, herein is laid up a crown of righteousness for those who love him at his appearing. So praise the Lord. I want to go to Psalm 91 today and then Psalm 23, two of Rose's favourite psalms. And you know, um, sorry, that's annoying me there. Um, with these psalms, I think the Lord can speak for himself. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is our refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that waits at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in thy hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample underfoot. Because he hath set his love upon thee, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Praise the Lord. That's a promise. That's a promise to us from the Lord himself. And we all know the 23rd Psalm, and it's amazing, it's an amazing Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. My head, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise the Lord. That's promises from the Lord himself. I have not added anything to them today, so praise the Lord. I'm going to ask Georgia now to come out and share the eulogy. Oh, Ez is a bit taller than me. Um, Rosalind Patricia Bamblett was born on the 16th of August in 1947 in Leighton, New South Wales. Annie Rose was the ninth child of 14 children to Alf and Esmeralda Lulla Bamblet, both deceased. She was a loving sister to Neville, deceased, Merle, Jean, deceased, Mary, deceased, deceased, Les, deceased, Lionel, Geraldine, Li Lindsay, Mudgee, deceased, Linda and Gary. She was also the loving mother and mum to Kylie and Jerry Berry, um, John, Sharon, Julie and Rod. Um, as a child, the family grew up in Naranda and Leeton until the loss of their adored father, Alf, when they relocated back to Cumra and then, and then to Victoria, mostly living on Rumbalara. Annie Rose was a bit of an outlaw in her younger days, but eventually moved and settled um, in Sydney, where she met Uncle John Goulding and was embraced by the Goulding Rudd family. Annie Rose and Uncle John had four beautiful children, John, Sharon, Julie and Rod. She lived there for years and was welcomed into that loving and not into the family 
um, they, who loved her deeply and still do today. And later I'll read a message from Annie Vow. Annie Rose and Uncle John um, went their separate ways and Annie Rose moved back to Victoria um, where she met Uncle Alex Cooper and they were blessed with two beautiful children, um, Vicky and Lindsay. Unfortunately, tragic struck and she lost Lindsay to cot death. Annie Rose and Uncle Alex had parted ways, but over the years they become friends. Um, they stood together with the family to support their daughter, Vicky, through her illness and remained good friends after her passing. Even though she had lived with heartache, she had the strength and the love to help raise her grandchildren, Rosaline, Lindsay and Eddie. Sorry, Eddie, I put that wrong way. You're in the middle. <laughs> um, she gave them love, guidance and strength abundantly. Annie Rose had lots of grandkids and great-grandkids um, and she loved each and every one of them wholeheartedly. She was always there to love and support them and give them a hand through good times and bad times and she also played a vital role in um, Simone and Zaya's lives as well. Um, I just want to tell you a yarn though about Annie Rose and her mother's intuition. So as most of you know, Annie Rose had Kylie and Annie Jerry Berry before she went to Sydney. Kylie was adopted out and Annie Jerry Berry was raised by Nan and Dad, Annie June and Uncle Rex. She knew Annie Jerry was all right because she was raised with family and she could see her, still see her. But Kylie went to a family that Annie Rose didn't know. For years she had longed for her daughter, Kylie, and worried about where she was where she, and how she was. Then, believe it or not, one night while Sunny Rose was watching the Flying Doctors, she saw this gorgeous young black woman playing a nurse on the screen. She kept watching and she knew in her heart that this was her daughter. She kept it to herself for a while and then started telling family members and then finally reached out to find out if that was indeed her daughter. And praise the Lord it was. Um, so it just goes to show just how strong a mother's love is and Kylie and Annie Rose were able to reunite and grow their love and bond. Annie Rose also had a special bond with her nieces and nephews where she played a vital part in their lives and those were Annie Merley Girl, Uncle Dixie, Uncle Scrap, Sharon and Richard and, and then their children and their children's. Annie Rose also, oh sorry I spoke that bit, Annie Rose leaves a huge legacy. Her children, grandchildren and great grandchildren are all part of her and they were a pride and joy. She always ensured that her children were loved, nurtured and supported no matter how old they were. Her brother Lionel said that she always looked after him so when he caught rheumatic fever she made sure that she would keep him company by catching rheumatic fever as well. The bond that was born out of that illness remained with them, particularly with their love for Vai and um, Annie Rose's leadership in early years. Linda, mum, remembers um, how fiercely protective she was of her siblings. One day, when taking the younger siblings, nieces and nephews to the pool, she seen this bloke who had earlier that day ran over Uncle Bat's brand new bike, parked at the two trees, drunk and asleep. So Annie Rose being Annie Rose, she walked over to the car, dragged him out by the hair of his head, <laughs> gave it to him and then threw his keys in the orchard. <laughs> then she calmly took them all to the pool where they had a deadly day, like nothing had happened. Um, those who knew Annie Rose and knew how fiercely protective she was, I bet you could all visualise that story as Mum had recalled it. Annie Rose had lots of good friends over a lifetime, but it would be remiss of us to not mention her great friendship with Annie Cat, Maureen Charles. They loved each other, but at times you wouldn't know um, if they were either joined at the hip or they were sworn enemies. <laughs> but no matter how many times they fell apart, they always would go back together and are probably are still best friends now and probably still both arguing up in heaven now. Um, there are so many stories about Annie Rose and how her home was always filled and with family and friends. And we hope that some of you could share those later, um, either up here or at the wake. Annie Rose had a great passion for education. 
She believed that our community, well, she believed that for our community to have equality, it needed to encompass self-determination. Her drive and passion focused on early years, um, and which, oh sorry, her dedication, oh yeah, early years, um, and Bayo I had, oh sorry, I'll get there in a minute. Her dedication for the Victorian Aboriginal early years led her to make change for children across Victoria. Her dedication has not gone unnoticed with her being honoured as a life member of VAI. VAI have put together a dossier of her involvement in VAI itself, but also the early years sector, and we hope that someone might be able to give the opportunity to read that out later. If not, we encourage you all to read it. It is a wonderful tribute to her achievement. It was Annie Rose, Nan and Annie Mary who drove around Shep and Marupana talking and doing surveys to family about the community needs for their children in early years. And this helped led to the establishment of Lidgy, which then helped establish the MAC services across the state. Despite her achievements and accolades throughout her life, Annie Rose's greatest accomplishments and pride was her children. Her greatest job was being their provider, teacher and mother. Annie Rose had her fair share of heartache, but through it all, she still had the capacity to love and support family, friends and the wider community. I just want to tell you all that we will greatly miss our beautiful mum, nan, great nan, sister and auntie. There are no real words to describe the pain that we're all feeling, but we want to thank you all for your presence today and your support and that it is greatly appreciated as we go through this hard time. Thank you. Thank you for that, Georgia. Yes, I can remember um, the incident with the flying doctors and she rang me up and she said, Ez, I think that girl on the flying doctors is my daughter. Can you have a look and see? And I, I, I said, which one? She said, oh, you, you have a look and see. So I watched it and I said, yeah, Aunt, it could be. I'm not sure, but it could be. But, you know, praise the Lord, it did turn out to be. And, you know, I just want to say that, you know, growing up with her, she was my sister aunt. Um, we grew up together. We were reared up by Nan and Mum. Mum was working to help Nan and we were all together and we were reared up as sisters and as aunts. Um, she was kind of on the borderline, so if they were older than me, they were kind of aunt and uncle, but if they were younger, they were sisters and brothers. But she was kind of just a little bit older. But I was a very cheeky young girl, and last week I apologised to her for being cheeky to her so many times. Because <laughs> you know when you're older and you really look after the younger ones. So I want to just thank and praise the Lord for her today. And I've got now got a favourite reading by Eddie. Um, for those that don't know, Eddie Bryant, um, Nan's favourite grandson. Um, <coughs> um, this was Nan's favourite poem. Um, wherever we lived, uh, any part of our lives, she had this up hanging on her wall. So here I go. Hopefully I can make it through. One night I dreamed a dream. As I was walking along the beach with my lord, across the dark sky flashed sheen scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one belonging to the lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand, I noticed that at many times along the path of my life, especially at my lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed during my saddest and my most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why. When I needed you the most, you would leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you, never, ever, during your trials and testings. When you saw only one set of footprints, it was then when I carried you. Love you, Nan. Um, we're going to um, now have a slideshow presentation.
as I said before, a celebration of Rose's life. <coughs>
never went out oh, with our hearts and bellies were always full. <laughs> we have so many fond memories from growing up in Shepparton and Melbourne. We also loved our trips to Sydney to visit family. Mum and Nan, um, thank you for being our mother, grandmother. We couldn't have asked for a better mum or Nan. You will always and forever be in our hearts um, where you will remain until we are back in your arms, loving you forever and always. I've also got one um, from Annie Valrad who's, um, who's in Sydney and unfortunately couldn't make it today. Hi, I'm Valerie Rudd. Rose was my sister-in-law and I've known her and loved her for over 50 years. The first, the family first met Rose in Glebe in New South Wales where she met my brother Buddy and they had four beautiful children, Johnny, Sharon, Julie and Rod. Rose was always a part of the Goulding family and we all loved her dearly. I have fond memories of Rose. I remember when she came to Seven Hills a few years ago and we went to the club. She had a couple of beers and we played the pokies. We had a great day. I think that was with Julie. I remember Rose's smile and I know she loved her children dearly. The Rudds and Bamblets spent lots of times together when the children were young. These were special times, but as Rose lived in Melbourne, we didn't get to see her as much as we wanted, but she'll always be in our heart. We will miss you, Rose, love Val and the Rudd family. Um, on behalf of my mum and my siblings, I just want to praise and thank the Lord for Annie Rose. Um, I don't remember the, the, a memory when I was growing up in Culver Road that Annie Rose wasn't a part of, and her kids. Um, <coughs> but Annie Rose gave me my first job. She took me to the bank and signed me up, took me to a thing. So I want to thank her for that. But one of the, there's a few stories I had. Apparently I'm not allowed to tell one. <laughs> I am allowed to. Mum said no, Julie said yes. <laughs> but I'll tell that one in a minute. But, but um, I mean, if you knew Annie Rose, you knew she loved the pokies, but you knew she loved op shopping more. And you're like, <laughs> oh, I don't know how many times I'd had to sit in the car for hours while she op shopped. Like, you know, but I've got to tell it, Mum. <laughs> I remember it being out, like Annie, Annie Rose loved partying up as well. But we were out at, out at Sherbourne one night and I was standing out at the bar and I was getting a drink and I was only young. But this young young fella come up and asked for a Maduri. <laughs> <laughs> and then only, I could hear Rani Rose goes, where's Maduri? And I just went, <laughs> no, right? And if that, I just couldn't do it. I had to walk away. <laughs> but no. Um, that's, how, that's the kind of person that Annie Rose was, you know. She just loved everyone. She was fun to be around. You know, she loved dancing. Like, mum, mum, mum is like Eddie. Has to be about her age. Her last night was laughing about how, <laughs> you know, she, she loved dancing. She loved stray blacks and she was always up on the dance floor. But, you know, I just want to praise and thank Annie Rose. Um, the Lord for Annie Rose and, and for all that she's done in our lives. And for, you know, if you're standing up here looking at you, there's a whole big number of you, so she's obviously touched your lives as well, so thank you. Us vertically challenged ones. My fondest memory of Auntie Rose was that she was my beautiful aunt, good looking. Sorry, you other gals, but she was a beautiful aunt. She dressed well, she always loved uh, to wear beautiful shoes and she was 10 years mum, us uh, mum's junior. So praise the Lord, I, I, I want to read this out. My deepest condolences to Aunt Rose's children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. When I last saw Aunt Rose, the amazing thing that struck me was how her beautiful bamblet eyes sparkled. She was looking unto heaven and its glory was reflected in them. When she spoke, her only concern was for her beloved family. The thought of leaving them made her heart ache. So after we read the 23rd Psalm, we prayed and asked God to continue to be with her family as he always been, as he had been. While praying, the Lord reminded me 
of a message Pastor Prince shared about the Lord Jesus as he languished on the cross. He had been beaten and tortured for hours and now, while nailed on the cross, was suffering hypothermia, dehydration, excruciating pain, anemia, shame because he's on the cross naked, and a broken heart, which ultimately caused him to expire. No one suffered like the Lord Jesus. He did it for us. In the midst of his horror, he looked down at his mother, knowing her heart was breaking as she watched him dying on a cruel Roman cross. His heart ached as he entrusted John with her love and care. John's name in Hebrew means grace. Today, a greater John, my Lord Jesus, is asking everyone under the sound of my voice, if you want him to come into your hearts and fill it with his love, as he embraces and comforts you with his loving kindness, tender mercies, and grace. Bless you. Where are you, son? Um, this is my protector, Robert. Um, look, I just have to say something before this closes because of my sister. Uh, George just mentioned about the, uh, my rheumatic fever as a kid. Oh, when I was younger, I was very sick all my life. Um, Mum was always there, and also all the family was there, but also she was there, always there. Uh, and then um, one day, see what we did in our family, Mum was a very smart, cagey woman. She had 14 children, and she had to raise 14 children. So what she did is she allocated an older sibling to look after the younger siblings, right? and that was our protector. Well, my protector was this one here, Rose. She was my prose, my, my protector. I remember the first day I went to school, and we was there, and I was you know, running around, and you know, it was a bit like my, one of my grandsons run everywhere. One jar, I think his name is, anyway. So. <laughs> but anyways, he... Uh, and these girls started to tease me, and, and one of them sort of went to slap me. Well, he actually did slap me, I think. Next minute, Rose flew across, flogged the four of them. There's four of them, four of them. This little woman, and she was still small then, she did that. Rose is my protector, always there, always had my back all my life, right? And then one day, this is the funny part, man, one day, um, have a look at the photo. I don't think it does her nose justice. Um, she was actually, I was at school and I was looking at her and someone said, oh, what's your sister's name? And I said, her name is Rose and she's got a boot nose. So Rosaline boot nose bambler. <laughs> so she, Rose obviously got upset and had a bit of a fight with other kids who had a go at them. Went home and told mum. Well, you know, in our family, big family, mum had a rule. If one sibling fought with the other sibling, the one who was offended had to go and get the switch to, for us to be smacked with, all right? So Rose had to go and get the switch for me. But I, but I have a look at it, have a look at the photo. It's a beautiful boot nose, my, my sister. And I stuck with it all her life, and I actually always sort of on the side teased her but loved her very much and this woman was my protector all my life. When I was a young fella, you know, I was a bit of a mug there. She was always there. She always had my back, always looked after me. Even now as an older person, she's there again. She was always there. And Rose, they talked about her in early childhood and now she did that and she's a life member of AI and she most certainly was. And she done a hell of a lot for the Koori communities of this state and, and nationally as well, because she's on the, the state, na uh, the National Committee of Snake. So rest in peace, my sister, love you very much. And I won't give you a nickname here, but uh, love you very much. And she was my protector and looked after all of us in the family. Thank you.
Um, I think Rose was everyone's protector. Rose and I probably lived together in probably half a dozen houses and that, and we shared our kids together and that, and Rose has always played a very big part in my life and in my kids' life. Um, no one, we were, um, we were twins because we both had crooked toes. <laughs> and our family were the only ones who've got crooked toes and they're exactly the same. So we were twins and I remember she used to carry me on her hip and I was her baby and I, I suppose that was why. <laughs> and that, But she's always been there. She's always been there for me. And she might have been just slight in stature, but man, she was a big woman. You know, big heart, fierce, fiercely protective. It would just go anybody who dared to have a go at you. And that I know that she's part of, part of me, you know. My sister. And that I'm gonna so so miss her. And that's, thank you, my God, that's enough for me. I think that, you know, that everybody that's spoken has said just about it, Rose, and I think that anybody here from the community knew Rose and knew that she was, that what she would do, she was loyal uh, to her family, to a fault that what she would do is if anybody harmed her or did anything to them, then that, that you know, she'd make sure about it. I can remember one time um, this fella had said something to me and you know what she did? She bottled him. <laughs> <laughs> she, that, she didn't care, she didn't care. She just, that was, that was her and she was just protective. She took, uh, she had, um, she had my children for a while. I was going through a bad time and she looked after uh, Neville, Charles and Anne and she lived with, they lived with them in, in Newton Street, I think it was, but it, but it was um, that, it, that she looked after them and, and that's what she would do for you, that if you needed help and if you were down, that she would be there for you. She was, what everyone said, an amazing woman. Um, I think that during the time, I, we'd only found out in 2020, she rang me and told me, you know, that she had cancer. And every time I'd go to see her and when I'd leave, I, I was an absolute mess because of, of what was happening and I knew what was going to happen. But go and visit her and um, she was... <sighs> what she was, she was amazing and she had faith. And that was the thing that kept her and drove her was her faith. She did an amazing job, like everybody said, what she did in within um, early childhood and about starting Lydia and a whole range of other things. But she um, she was and loved her grandchildren, her children too. And I always say we we're always we we're always better we're better grandmothers than we were mothers. I know that for a fact. But she just absolutely adored her, her, her grandchildren. And um, the night before she passed, you couldn't get in the room because the boys hogged the room, her grandsons. They wouldn't, you couldn't, there was no room for you. Anyway, I was talking to them the next day and saying, you know, what she did, she said, they were in there and you can imagine how they would be with her. They'd actually had her laughing. They had, they, she said, the stories, you know, they, the stories they were telling and what they were doing and how they tease and everything else. And what she did was, uh, that was one of the, really the most blissful, loveliest things I'd heard that they, they, that they were in the room and they'd, they'd had her laughing. I just want to say I love my sister. I love my sister very much. Everything everybody said about her being a protector, she was. And that's what she did. She protected us all her life. I was her little sister, and I know she protected me. I can remember, and people probably don't, but I remember the, the memory, and I always go thinking about it, is when we got the word um, Dad had been missing, and uh, 
the word, they brought word home to us, we were in Leeton, uh, that Dad had died, and they took us to uh, friends we used to go and visit, and I couldn't look Rose in the eye at all. I would just cry. I was only five years old, but I remember looking into those beautiful eyes, and I remember the sadness and and how we just cried. And that's it was just about her, her loving and her protection. So rest in peace, my darling sister. I love you to pieces. I just wanted to say how oh, what a privilege was to know this strong woman. When you're a kid, you don't really understand people in your lives and the roles they play. But as you get older and as a black man, I can honestly say the strongest words you could ever hear is, I love you, son. My last visit to her, that's what she said. And it's something I always carry because no one will fully understand how strong this woman was to me and my brother Richard and my sister Sharon. She stood up in a time when my father needed her, like all, like we've, everyone's been saying, the whole of that family, the Bamlet family. When you're growing up and not really knowing where your place is in life, to have someone like this so strong in the background telling you constantly, I love you, son, is something that you will carry forever. And as this black man will never, ever forget, my kids will never forget the role. I've always told them the role that she's had in my life. And there's no words can say it. I've tried to write it. Every time I write, I just start crying. I've had the privilege of having strong women in my life. Never really paid much attention to them and their roles. But I'll tell you what, I honour every one of them and what they've done. All my aunties and my mums. Like I said, I just can't, I just can't say how much, so I can't put it in words. But thank you, aunt. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Well, I'd like to pay my respects to aunt, um, elders, um, past and present and being on uh, traditional owner's land. Um, yeah, probably parts of this. Um, Aunty Rose has always been my bamblet mum, always caring for me, me um, especially when I was going through the hard times and uh, changing from where I was to now. Um, and we, we talk about having protectors. Well, Aunt was a lot of other people's protectors because she told me not to bash him. <laughs> <laughs> and that was on and off the footy field. So, so a lot of people are very lucky. I had my auntie looking after me and mum. Um, my mum, my mum loves Auntie Rose and my Auntie Rose always um, showed respect to my mother. And just some of the yarns we used to have and we'd be sitting there at the house and <laughs> she'd be going, um, Oh, we start talking about people and it get real deep and then they'll get nasty and then... But after that, we pray for them. <laughs> so that was, that was good. And, um, yeah, so I was tell you, telling Julie, said, oh, you were talking about this one, but we prayed for them later, so it was good. And talk about a funny lady, mate. Oh, unbelievable. And the, the one-liners um, just come out and they were at the right time and just the way she consoled people and the way she spoke about people. She loves her kids dearly. Um, and she said to me one time, I hope, hope my kids um, forgive me, as Ev says about being the next generation, you know, you look after your grandkids, but she loved you dearly and she loved the grandkids, she loved everybody. And I'm so blessed and on that um, she is, is my um, Bamlet mum and um, she loved my, my, my siblings when they looked after them. And, and actually, in a way, I'm glad, glad Dad gave them to you, to Honey Rose, because then I could become a part of that group. Um, gee, I can go on for hours about aunt stuff in there, but some of that stuff you've got to keep to yourself. 
And uh, just an amazing woman, and I'm going to miss her, mate. I'm going to miss her dearly. But I know that she's with me. Um, the night before, she had a communion at, at the aged care. And this is about the Lord. 2 Timothy 1 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and sound mind. And aunt helped me get a sound mind through prayer. And she had a communion. And I was in Melbourne, and so I apologise to everyone. I haven't been around the last couple of months, so I haven't been able to cope. But I had a dream that she did have a communion and she went to the Lord. And I didn't even know that and Julie told me the next day and Sharon. So, praise be. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Um, where's the early girl? Oh God, you should come out of here. So, um, Merle, myself, Neville, Bimbo, we're all reared up by Nan and Mum. Our mums were around too, but Nan really looked after us. So, I think we need to just say, you know, that how much we loved her, that she was our sister as well. Um, she was Merley girl's sister and her mum <laughs> and looked after her and I know Merle's finding it hard but <laughs> it, we would be remiss if we didn't say how, my, how close we all were. And how much we all loved her. You say it for her. Um, I just want to say on behalf of mum, um, I want to pray and thank the Lord for my Auntie Rose. She wasn't just our auntie, she was um, a surrogate grandmother. Um, and we just loved her dearly. Uh, her kids are my siblings. Um, my son and daughter, you know, that's her grandkids. You know, I trust them with two peas in a pod they could never do anything wrong in her eyes. <laughs> um, but I had to tell you about pub one night, because Georgia. So we're out at the GV one night and she's having the conversation with a random old girl too. And she reckons, um, go and tell that lad to turn down the music. <laughs> and I was like, which lad aren't? She goes, up there. And I was a DJ, so I ignored her. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, he comes over and goes, who's this woman? She keeps telling me to turn the music down. I was like, aunt, you can't say that. You're at a nightclub. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm going to love and miss her so much. Um, yeah. Thanks. I love them very, very much. And I love our family. I love our family. And like the kid said, you know, she's my aunt, but she's like a mum to me too. And I just love you. Praise it, but she's in peace. I just, um, I'm her brother's granddaughter, Les. Also, the I grew up really close with her best grandson, as he reckons, Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's a, the favourite. Um, I reckon maybe Pop and her were really close. Used to love partying up together. <laughs> um, I just want to say on behalf of my family, Nan and Pop, send my love to all of you. Is she was my auntie, but to me she was my nan. Um, very vivid memories of of her always showing up for me and my family, even though she used to scare us. And you know, didn't the boys didn't want to go home, so they stayed at home, <laughs> scared of getting ripped. Um, you know, but she took in all of us like her own. We were we were like all her grandchildren. And just everyone was welcome. Um, and from all of my family, love to all of you. And she got up and spoke at my 21st, you know, really proud. And that's what she was. She was a really proud woman of her children and her family. And um, I'm really proud to be, to have known her and had her in my life. And I get to stand up here and, you know, share this celebration of her life with all of you. 
So, love Yoni Rose. So we'll um, go to the slideshow presentation in a minute, but I just want to tell you a little story about Rose that um, when, <laughs> when we were growing up. Anyway, one day um, she came home from somewhere and the dog had chewed up her shoe. So she got the broom and she was under the bed. The dog took off under the bed and she was under the bed trying to get the dog and the dog wasn't coming anywhere near her because he chewed up her shoe and I don't think the dog ever forgot that and never chewed up another shoe of hers, so <laughs> I know that I wouldn't have anyway. She loved her shoes and, and thinking back it was hard to get the shoes back then so of course it killed the dog, but she never. Um, we're going to have a celebration, um, we're going to have a look at the slideshow present. Keeps reminding me of you And how I miss you, heaven knows This hurt inside Keeps telling me it's over But I still love you, Curry Rose In the evening down by the river And as the golden moon shines brightly up above There we'd watch the rippling waters As the river softly flows I'd whisper words of love to Curry Road Well, now she's gone It seems my world has ended Without her, the stars no longer glow Though they say we should part She took part of my heart And only God knows how I miss my curry road in the evening we'd stroll down by the river And as the golden moon shines brightly up above There we'd watch the rippling waters As the river softly flows I'd whisper words of love to Curry Road just remember, I still love you, Curry Rose. People don't pick you up. On the blue highway The blue highway Yeah, you travel along People ain't gonna pick you up On the blue highway The blue highway Yeah, you're always alone Mississippi I was trying to lose those on damn blue But if I don't find no sunshine out in California I'll just go home Yeah, I'll cry no more Those people don't pick you up on the blue highway The 
Um, now I'm going to um, Uh, thanks. Uh, now this lonely heart keeps reminding me of you and how I miss you, heaven knows. Good education was uh, steadfast and um, for a very uh, small woman she cast a huge shadow across the education landscape. In fact if you, you peel back her contribution you'll see that many of the policies that are celebrated today in education came from uh, the VI table and in early childhood led by Rose and a whole lot of other aunts at, at that time. And in fact, uh, uh, three-year-old and four-year-old kindergarten was uh, her idea long before um, it, it uh, became policy. So there are kids on the reading mat today in, in early childhood who are there uh, having an education uh, because of the work of uh, Rose and that will pass on to when their kids and grandparents and so Rose's influence will carry on for, for generations. Um, her and I had a, a, a lot of this on the conversation today that um, uh, she shouldn't play cards because she was so demonstrative with her facial expression and uh, she had a great bullshit detector <laughs> and you knew it pretty quick if uh, something wasn't right, uh, the eye roll and, and the timing for a really smart comment was uh, always there. We had this cute joke that probably Rose and I were the only two that found it funny but um, we used to choreograph so we could frustrate the minute takers at VI. We would choreograph moving and seconding and so it was moved Mark and seconded Rose so it read like Mark Rose did both. So. Um, <laughs> Again, we, we found it hugely funny, but it's probably not that funny when you, you had to be there. Um, so uh, on behalf of all the people who have come to the table at VI and all the communities that are represented at the table at